episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, this afternoon, it's time for a gin episode of the show. Um, and But not your usual gin, it has to be said. Um, this, I think this is going to gonna be quite an interesting tasting um, because it features um, A, Firkin gin, and B, oak aged gins, cask matured gin cask rested gin call it whatever you like um, but basically uh, and I've been saying this for uh, a reasonable amount of time now that I think this is where the whole gin thing is going to go the oak aged gins um, why do I say that well I think um, one of the reasons is certainly uh, the amount of oak aged gins that are now on the market I mean um, when I was uh, asked to judge the 2015 World Gin Awards I did for round one um, cask aged gins and there was uh, a grand total of um, four uh, that were entered. Uh, if you fast forward two years later, again uh, for round one I was asked to do uh, cask aged gins and lo and behold this time there was 20 odd. So A, it's obviously producers are, are now looking at sort of different ways to um, impart additional characteristics to their gin and also I think it's it kind of plays to to the sort of uh, maybe the, the the gin skeptics shall we say people that, that are maybe not quite so keen on gin in its raw form but like whiskey and like other um, matured spirits and so there's a, a kind of correlation there's a, a I suppose there's a characteristic that you know they would recognize from sort of you know cognac and uh, and other oak matured spirits and um yeah maybe then kind of like they sort of taste it and go yeah okay so i can see what this gin business is all like and maybe then they sort of uh, look into other non-oak aged uh, gins but either way i think um i think uh, the the oak aged category is certainly here to stay and i know it upsets a few gin purists uh, i certainly remember from the the 2015 or it might have even been earlier than that, one of the earlier um, World Gin Awards that uh, uh, I was uh, asked to participate in. And a, a, a gin aficionado at my table basically said, this is not proper gin, gin should not be aged in casks, yada, 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 which I thought was a little bit narrow-minded, but in every type of spirit you get sort of purists in inverted commas. But anyway, so, so today I'm looking at the range uh, of gins from Firkin Gin, which is uh, a, a brand, I suppose, for want of a better word, that was created uh, by uh, Glennon Moore Spirits uh, in, uh, in Scotland. And uh, I think I've done an episode of the show on their independent bottlings. Uh, but back in 2014, they were playing around with, with gin and um, uh, I believe came up with uh, what they've now called uh, Try Me Naked. Um, and launched um, said Firkin Gin in 2015 and um, I first came across it I think it was uh, I think it might have been in the 2016 awards 2017 I forget now but certainly I remember tasting and thinking yeah this is this is really interesting stuff and um, the in the 2017 uh, World Gin Awards it scooped um, Best UK uh, cask matured gin which I think might have been batch three now originally they released them these are all small batch releases and they gave them numbers and and they they were each finished in different types of casks and I think batch three if memory serves me correct was uh, matured in uh, rested as the label says in uh, x 20 year old Glengarry casks and then they use you know, the next batch is matured in something different and uh, I've got two two batches to show you how different the particular cast types influence the same basic material. Uh, incidentally, they didn't quite do fare so well in uh, this year's World uh, uh, Gin Awards. They they only got a gold medal in the uh, in said uh, cask age category. But nevertheless, I still think that um, you know, Obviously, that the the product is really good. I certainly stock it, um, so that should give you, a, or should I say, I stock some of the range, so that should give you a clue as to what I actually think about them. Um, so, 
the basic gin that they produce, the Try Me Naked, is, uh, like I say, it's a Scottish gin. I don't know where it is distilled, but it is quadruple distilled and features 10 botanicals, which are juniper, coriander seed, uh, angelica, orris, lemon and uh, orange peel, cassia bark, licorice, ground nutmeg and cinnamon bark. So plenty of spice notes there, kind of almost sort of classically London dry in styles and citrus obviously um, um, and you know some of my favourite spices going in there so it uh, certainly sort of appeal so we shall see what, what, uh, what that is going to be like. Anyway, um, not a great deal else to say apart from um, uh, I believe when when the brand was launched, they uh, decked out a Lamborghini Huracan with uh, their Firkin Gin lo logo, and it was painted bright orange. So, and I believe there was some kind of competition. I don't know whether the competition is still going. That if you take a picture of the of said Lamborghini in and around London, they send you a free bottle. But whether that's still happening or not, I couldn't honestly say for certain. But. Uh, um, yeah, it's kind of nice, uh, nice thing to do. Uh, hire a Lambo for a while. Anyway, let's um, let's let's just uh, crack on and introduce the lineup. Right. Okay. So, uh, like I said, the we're going to kick off with the naked, obviously. So we're going to sort of get a grounding as to what the character of the basic gin is like. All the, all of their gins are bottled at forty six percent, and then, like I said, this is. Uh, quadruple distilled spirit. Second one we're going to be looking at is um, the batch before last which um, I don't know if they, I think they gave up on, on the whole batch numbers uh, at a certain point. Um, I, this could have been maybe six or seven I forget and this was uh, uh, rested in ex Glenlossy casks so as you can see quite not a huge amount of colour picked up by the cask and and Glen Lossy, quite a sort of gentle um, whiskey, so it should be interesting. This is the current release of the Firkin original, um, and um, like I said, no longer using batch numbers, although this is technically 14 stroke 2018 apparently. So, um, and this has been rested in ex virgin oak casks, so as you can see, it's picked up the colour uh, pretty quickly, as is the the case with uh, virgin oak so so not only are they just sort of like doing this but they've now launched uh, a couple of, uh, of, of really interesting uh, bottlings I think now this has been rested in ex cherry butts or an ex cherry butt I don't know uh, uh, how many they bottle in a batch I think it's about two, three hundred bottles, I guess. Um, and then we're going to move on and look at the port uh, rested. And as you can see, it's got a, a lovely kind of pinky hue. And I guess the thing is that these two uh, casks should hopefully offer um, interesting sort of subtle characteristics and uh, hopefully should, you know, again, be slightly different. And the one that really interests me and I really got into was this one, which is the... Um, Isla cask uh, rested um, version. This has been rested in ex-Lafroy casks and um, well, obviously we'll get to that one in due course. So so that's today's lineup. I hope, hopefully this is going to be a really interesting tasting uh, to see how the different cask types interact and uh, what additional flavours they add to the, the base gin. So let's kick off with a bit of nakedness then shall we? Right, okay, so let's uh, let's have a bit of naked then, shall we? Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Quite juniper forward, crisp, fresh. Um, I'm certainly picking up the citric notes early on. Um, certainly I'm getting the lemon, the orange. There's, a li there's some spice underneath it. The cassia bark is noticeable, um, as is the, uh, the cinnamon. It's quite rounded, it's full, it's it's pleasant, um, nothing really kind of stands out uh, or, or, or kind of shouts and I suppose you could say that is a good sign, it's all quite harmonious, it's not sort of one dimensional. 
So yes, uh, the, the, the base spirit or the base gin, shall we say, for their experimentation is certainly certainly a pleasant gin. Well, certainly it is on the nose. Anyway, let's see, let's see what the palate's like. For a quadruple distilled spirit, I'm certainly getting some spirit character up first. It has a, a sort of a milky, almost kind of weakiness, um, which is quite pleasant. Um, then the junum comes through, a little bit of, uh, of uh, citrus, and the spice kind of follows through on the end, the sort of the, the, the cinnamon and the, um, the cassia. Again, it's a very pleasant gin. It, I think, for me, looking at the other gins that or uh, that I have in, in on the list, so to speak, it doesn't offer me anything different to what I've got already, which is purely the only reason why I decided not to actually stock it. And I mean, I've got all I hate to think how many now, must be getting on towards about 55, 58 different gins, and uh, I'm running out of space for them. Um, so I kind of like have to be a little bit harsh, shall we say, and uh, um, it, it's no different to sort of how, how I judge the whiskies, you know, it's, if, if, even if I think it's a particularly good whisky, if I haven't got room for it, well, what am I going to do with it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I think the gin is, is quite pleasant. I mean, it's certainly not unbalanced. It's quite harmonious. It's kind of very um, straightforward. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, good, nice start. Okay, so let's move on to the Glenlossie rested uh, variant. Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Now that is a lovely nose. It's got a lovely, soft, slightly creamy oak kind of character. Very gentle, very subtle, but a distinct sort of um, almost barley-ish kind of character is now slightly more forward. Um, than the juniper. There's a little bit of wood spice, but the sort of citrus is starting to sort of like cut through it, and also a little bit of the, the juniper, a little bit of the spice. It's, it's all very subtle and very appealing, and this is why I think that those of you that probably have a, a thing about um, gin but love your whiskies and things like that, would, this would appeal because the oak is quite forward. It's I wouldn't say overly dominating, but it's certainly the most noticeable component. And then the gin is kind of sitting back and is a lot more subtle than um, than it is without any oak um, characteristics. But that's just a lovely nose, just a lovely spirit. And um, yeah, really quite impressive. Let's see what the palette's like. Mm. So the creaminess of the oak is kind of melding in with the sort of the, the creaminess of the uh, of the spirit. Um, again, plenty of vanilla, little bit of bitter tannin right on the finish. Um, kind of again mingling in with the cassia bark and the nutmeg. Uh, and again, all quite subtle, harmonious, predominantly oak characters with a little bit of juniper coming through. Um, it's not a big full-on monster of a, of a gin and I think that's the thing the gin itself is quite subtle and I, I really think that works quite nicely with the oak I'm, I'm quite uh, quite impressed with that and unfortunately that variant is no longer available but the next one is okay so let's move on to the original um, virgin oak finish or oh rested or whatever you want us to call it anyway um now this is more like um oak age gin that i've come across in the past the the oak is really quite intense and 
it's kind of drawn out this kind of almost mentholated character from the from the botanicals um, from the and I'm certainly getting kind of pepper sort of sort of almost burnt toast the oak is quite aggressive it has to be said it doesn't it it certainly lacks the subtlety of the uh, of the Glen Lossy cask I mean it's still really intriguing but it is really spicy now it's really pulled out that cinnamon and cassia bark and and like I said it's almost kind of peppery and mentholated um, and intense as an almost kind of rose petal you know I'm not getting a huge amount of juniper again the juniper really seems to have been kind of buried under the sort of the, the oak character and uh, what the oak has, has done to the, the actual spirit it's still very impressive no, you know and again I think if you like sort of quite oaked whiskies, quite oaked spirits um, this would certainly appeal how this would work in a cocktail I have absolutely no idea I mean I'm sure there are bartenders or cocktail makers or whatever they want to call themselves um, that could fashion something uh, quite unique with uh, uh, this type of spirit but obviously being a being <laughs> as you know a purist um, I wouldn't know but uh, I like that. I like that nose. Like I said, it's, the oak is maybe a touch aggressive, um, but certainly it's a it's an enjoyable spirit. Let's see what the power gives. Big mouth filling herbal again plenty of aggressive oak um, again a, a bitterness on the finish um, I, I do wonder whether maybe the, the virgin oak is a little bit too much for the gin again I'm getting a little bit of juniper I'm also getting a bit of kind of raw spirit character not not a huge amount um, Maybe that is the, 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 the basic gin, maybe that's what the cask has kind of done to it. It's difficult to say for definite because these are small batch bottlings. Um, but it's really unique, really interesting and maybe not quite the sort of one that uh, if you've never had an O-Gage gin that uh, you would go for because like I said it's kind of really brought out that sort of medicinal, well not medicinal, that kind of mentholated kind of character which I've often found with a lot of oak aged gins and they are in this kind of way very unique and probably I imagine that they would elicit should we say either quite a positive or a negative response if you've never had this type of uh, gin before but you know I, I'm stocking it I think it's a really unique product um, and um, lovely spicy aftertaste though and that's that as you know that's what I like from my gins I like a nice a nice dollop of spice with my gin and uh, this certainly uh, certainly delivers a nice dollop of spice right okay so let's move on to the firkin sherry <laughs> right let's see whether those give us now again we're now back to subtle oak character um, that's a touch of dried fruit but the, the, the spirit is a lot more noticeable the, the juniper, the citrus overall I think the balance is a lot better on this particular bottling it, the oak is, is not so much in your face it's kind of sitting back a little bit but it's definitely adding that sort of slightly dried fruit kind of character the spices are a little bit dustier um, and almost kind of coriander-y like, coriander powder. Um, again, yes, there's a bit of nutmeg, but it's a lot sweeter and certainly the sherry cask has kind of added a sweeter, slightly dried fruit note to it. Um, not quite as sweet as, say, an old Tom, for example, but certainly it has given it kind of quite a nice, a nice rounded, sweet kind of character. Um, and this, I think, is probably, if I was going to suggest uh, non- uh, or first-time oak-aged gin 
drinkers to try one this is certainly the one that I would suggest they try because like I said that the oak isn't quite so aggressive it's a lot subtler and um, yeah that's that's a very very nicely balanced let's see what the power gives Mm, that's a lovely creamy soft finish. Again, the oak is up slow, uh, it's a little bit more noticeable on the palate. It does kind of kick off with a vanilla and um, dried fruit kind of character. But again, you know, the, the, the citrus and the juniper kind of come through quite nicely on the mid, mid palate. A little bit of spice on the finish, mingling in with that creamy, um, slightly spicy dried fruit, which is kind of you know it, it kind of it's a constant throughout but it's never sort of feels like it's overwhelming yes when initially you taste it you do get the oak but that then kind of sort of drops off you get the the, the juniper and the um and the botanical character coming through and all the while you know the, the oak is kind of sat underneath and lingers towards the end and i think that is an absolutely gorgeous spirit a gorgeous oak aged gin um and just sort of displays you know um plenty of the characteristics of both the oak and the spirit so yeah that's good the out. right okay so let's move on to the port now this was the one that i was most intrigued to, to taste because port can be really tricky to play with it can be very blanketing um and i'm guessing that the the, the resting time was pretty short i would have thought um, just to pick up soup salt of collar uh, and anyway let's uh, see what those good is again a lovely subtle balanced nose um, lovely slightly earthy um, red and black fruit but again the juniper and the citrus characters kind of cut through that um, but again it has a lovely sweetness and um, I, I love this. I think this is absolutely stunning. And incidentally, while well, we're on the subject of the port finished uh, firkin, um, we're, I've decided that we're going to have uh, a gin evening on the 25th of, uh, of this month. And this will be one of the ones that I'll be putting on. So uh, uh, you'll get to taste it first hand because this is a lovely nose. The sweetness of the, of the, of the fruit, the touch of, of, of vanilla from the oak just all really kind of works nicely with the um, with the botanicals and it's it's subtle it's it's not aggressive it's balanced it is lovely really really nice Let's see what the palette's like Mm, well, that's lovely. It seems to have, that the port seems to have pulled out a lot more of the spices. So I'm certainly getting the cinnamon, the coriander, um, the cassia, um, lovely woody, barky kind of aftertaste. Um, and again, it's all really quite subtle, quite sort of integrated. Again, I'm getting red fruits. Um, the juniper is certainly ple present. A little less maybe of the citrus, but certainly it kind of tingles on the edge in amongst all the spicy notes and mm, I like that that is really impressive and you know I mean I've tasted sort of gins that, that uh, have used rose petal and hibiscus and stuff like that to kind of get that kind of sweetness and um, maybe a little bit more of a floral kind of character and, but this has just worked really really nicely and it's just added that kind of slightly whiny red fruits and and sweetness to the to the spirit again certainly not sweet say something like an old tom because it's got a lovely kind of dry slightly bitter finish um but overall i think that is just superbly balanced spirit that is absolutely <laughs> Without a bit of peat, even if it is gin. 
Okay, so this is probably going to be the most divisive, I would imagine, of the O-Gage gins. Uh, I think this is probably going to be either a love or loathe, but anyway, let's, let's see when that goes. Again, the oak is subtle. There is a definite herbally, um, mentally peaty, salty kind of um, note. But again, I'm getting the juniper, I'm getting the citrus, I'm getting the spice. But as it sort of sits in the glass, you sit, the, the, the peatiness becomes a lot more prevalent. Um, and this is really, really unique, really interesting. Um, it's kind of like, almost like a young Laphroaig, um, but maybe a sort of a, a slightly more sort of possibly sweeter maybe I don't know um, I've certainly come across some sweet frogs in my time as just has to be said but yeah you know, this, this is just again a lovely harmonious nose and um, I really think that if you love Laphroaig if you love your Isle of Malts you should give this a try because this is this is really interesting stuff it has to be said um, mm. Mm. It's just, just a lovely nose. I really like this. Let's see what the palate's like. Ooh. Mm. Yes, there's a lot of isla cask there. There's a lot of peat up front, um, smoke, earth. But the, the juniper character really comes through on the middle. And then suddenly, and then we're back in with the peat and the earth and the smoke and the soot. Um, mm, Mouth-watering. I mean, I'm not getting a huge amount of, of the spices. I mean, yes, all right, there's a, a kind of a tingle on the tongue at the end, which... It, yeah, it's slightly spicy, I guess, but it is definitely juniper and peat and cask. Um, and yeah, it appeals to me, it has to be said. Um, a little bitterness on the end, but there's also an almost kind of barley sweetness as well. I think it's just really well balanced. And um, yeah, all right, you can argue that the emphasis is a lot more on the cask. I mean, it's all... I'm guessing that that's always going to be the case with with an Isla cask. Um, yeah, they are going to be sort of like quite quite pungent and quite dominating. But even so, that juniper character has, has kind of stood up to the um, stood up to the cask really really nicely. So uh, um, so yeah, another impressive bottling it has to be said. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. I think this has been a really intriguing and really interesting episode. Um, I know that the, the gin episodes don't get so many views because you guys are more into whiskey, but I really think that this is kind of the hybrid sort of part, you know, the sort of the crossover, shall we say. Um, and, you know, I'd really suggest that you, you give them a try. Um, like I said, the Naked, the Naked was okay. Um... I mean, it's certainly a well-made gin. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's quite balanced. But I think as a, as a kind of gin in its own right, I've got more interesting um, gins on my list. But that's not to say that that is a bad gin at all. I love the Glen Lossy cask. Um, that certainly ticked kind of all my boxes. Again, nicely subtly oaked. So, um, you know, the sort of... The, the combination of flavours kind of worked really, really nicely together. Um, the Virgin Oak edition, um, yeah, it's kind of more typical, I suppose, of um, oak-aged gins that I've come across in the past, in that the, the, the oak has kind of created this almost sort of mentholated kind of herbally kind of character. And it's quite aggressive, and um, it's. I don't think it's a first-timers, shall we say. I think if you are au fait with the whole oak age gin um, uh, flavour profile, shall we say, then I think you will really, really like that. But I think if you're a, a virgin <laughs> at the, the whole oak age gin thing, then I think there are other ones that maybe you should start with before you kind of kick on to that one. Um, like the sherry matured, uh, or the sherry 
rested version. Uh, I, I, I love that. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. The sherry has added that a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of dried fruit. It's all really nicely balanced and, hmm, yeah, really quite impressive. And um, the portwood, the one that I was probably most looking forward to trying because I thought, you know, that as an experiment could go horribly wrong. But again, the guys have done a really very, very good job. They haven't overly rested it in, in the cask, so it's added that sort of subtle, uh, whiny red fruit kind of character and kind of, you know, retain the juniper sort of characteristic. And I suppose for purists, this is probably the, the, the biggest issue they have with oak age gins is that the fact that the oak can become the more dominating factor and it's less about say the juniper and but to me you know I've tasted you know what they call contemporary gins in inverted commas where you actually sort of wonder where the hell the juniper is and you've got all these other weird and wonderful botanicals going on uh, and when you think that the, the juniper should be well, noticeable if nothing else you know sometimes you kind of wonder but you know i thought that was absolutely wonderfully balanced and like i said if you if it's intrigued you and you live in nottingham then book the day 25th of this month we will be uh, we, we will be tasting it and finally the isla um cask rested gin yeah you know, it's always going to be more about the cask than anything else. But, you know, I, I was impressed with the way the juniper stood up to it. Um, it was probably a bit simplistic in the fact that it was kind of peat, juniper, peat. Um, but, you know what, I like that. And I think if you like your Isla whiskies, and I think, you, again, you may be hesitant about sort of getting into, dipping your toe in the whole gin market, then that's obviously a really um, obvious kind of place to start. And, you yeah, know, really good so i think overall uh, i really am impressed with uh, what um, the guys at glen and moore are doing with uh, with the firkin gin and i hope they carry on doing it because i think this is this is like i said i think this is where gin should be going um rather than sort of weird and wacky botanicals and um you know all that kind of stuff so so anyway i hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show i hope this has kind of encouraged you to uh, maybe have a look at you know, Firkin Gin for definite or other oak age gins that are out there on the market and um, anyway so until next time all I have to say is good afternoon and good running